All right, so today we're going to look at sprites. Um, sprites are just essentially a group of values. Um, it's an object inside of JavaScript that represents a character um, in an animation. So they have these different attributes associated with them. And how we create a sprite is we use essentially like a variable tool to say var and then the name of your sprite gets and then we use this create sprite function and you give it an x and y coordinate where it's going to be, be placed on your screen so if you do 200 200 the center of your sprite is going to be the center of your screen and then you can change the animation of that sprite so if if you just use it as a default it's going to look like a gray square uh, that I think is 100 by 100 or something like that uh, but to change it so it actually looks like an like an image, then you use the set animation tab or the set animation function, and you'd use the animation tab to uh, create your animations. And then finally, you have to draw the sprites. You have to use this function here to actually draw them on the screen. So if you don't use draw sprites, it doesn't actually show up. So we're going to go through some of the activities uh, that make this up. So showing blocks uh, is where I probably start. Uh, it wants you to create a sprite by pulling uh, this into your workspace and then you can rename the sprite. I named it Hero and then if you notice here you have an X and Y coordinate and if you're not sure you can just rub over this command and it will tell you what those parameters are inside the parentheses. So the first two are your X and Y and then you have a width and a height that you can change as well by using these arrows. So the minimum that you have to do is an X and Y and then the other things you can add are width and height. So uh, this actually would create two different sprites and this one's going to be placed at 200, 200. It's going to be the default size. This is a hero sprite which is 100, 300. So it's going to be placed at 100 in the X and then 300 in the Y. So down here somewhere. And it gives a width and a height for this. And then draw sprites at the end. Um, so it will draw my two sprites. This is my sprite called sprite and this is my sprite called hero. You can see how you can change those objects there. The next activity, uh, we want to predict where it's going to be located. So if it's 300, 100, that's 300 in the X and 100 in the Y, so it's going to be in this top corner. This one has two different sprites and we want them to be placed here and here. They're both at 200 in the Y, but this was around 100, this is around 300 in the X. So if you notice, I create two sprites, 100, 200, and 300, 200, and then draw them and I place my two bricks. Uh, I believe that this was drawn here, so it only drew one sprite. If you move it to the end, it'll draw both. This goes into using your animation tab. So you can actually create and modify your sprites. So I'll go through some of those things with you on how to adjust your animations. So this one is, um, if we go into the animation tab, you'll see that some animations are already set up for us. We can actually make our own animations. Um, and we can delete our animations and so forth um, from here. So we use what they already have given, uh, this alien. You can crop it, you can resize it, you can do all these different things to it um, to make it your own. You can you know, fill color, all those things. So if you think about um, the paint tool, let's say you want a green alien instead. So you can come in here and fill you know, this guy in green and then you can make you know, a lighter shade of green. You can fill in you know, some of these other parts. You can do something like this to, uh, to change you know, the look of the alien, etc. So, um, but the fill tool will allow you to do that. Um, you can use the eraser, you can erase things, you can move the, the object, um, all sorts of things that you can do um, with these. The other thing that I think is more important is this like flip. So you can flip it horizontally or flip it vertically. So I can flip it so he's looking the other way. 
Um, I can flip it so he's upside down if I wanted to. So to do that, I'm going to hold down um, Alt and flip it. So I can flip him upside down. I can flip him this way. So all sorts of things you can do to manipulate these objects. You can rotate them. Just be careful when you rotate. If you don't change the size of this, it's going to cut him off. And if you keep rotating now, he's, he's cut away. So I'm going to back up using Control Z. So if you're going to use the rotate tool, go to um, resize the drawing area so that they're the same. So right now the width is uh, only 108. So I'm going to change this to 152. So it resizes the canvas. Now when I rotate him, he's good. And then I can crop it so it's you know to the edges. So those are some of the things you want to do. Um, I think he might be too big, so I can actually resize um, the item. So I can maintain the aspect ratio, and I re want to resize the canvas content so that instead of being 152 for the width, maybe I only want it to be 45. So it actually adjusts the height, and when I click resize, you'll see it gets more pixelated because he's, I mean, he's smaller, so he doesn't have as many pixels to make up his body, but you can see the difference. Um, can, you know, the buddy in comparison, this is now significantly smaller. If you zoom in, you can see the individual pixels and zoom out using your scroll wheel. So those are some, you know, faint things that you can do. Um, if you're just resizing the canvas itself, you can pick where that's going to be resized to. So if you want to anchor this top corner and you resize the width to 200, um, and maintain the aspect ratio and then hit resize, it'll resize everything down here. Um, so you can pick your anchor point for your resizing, which is kind of nice. Um, but the crop tool is super helpful, I think. Um, you want to get rid of all the extra space around your sprite, um, especially when we start doing games and collisions and those type of things. You want your sprite to basically fully encompass the, the workspace that's there, the canvas. That's pretty much it. You can duplicate it, so you can change your items. Um, new animation, let me show you that. It's got some preset clip art that you can pull in there from you know obstacles to backgrounds, environments, all sorts of things that you can put in your game that you don't have to create. But you can draw your own, or you can upload an image. And uploading an image is pretty cool. So you can go in, um, you know, let's say that you want to put yourself in the game. So you can upload your image. Oh, I need to upload something smaller. So um, I could go into my images. I'm going to go into my pictures here. And I do want to uh, insert myself into the game. I think that'd be fun. Actually, let's not. Let's just put an army man that's already in there. So I'm going to go to upload image, go to pictures. I've got a yellow army man right here. And I've uploaded him into there. Now he's got a lot of pixels, okay? So he's a pretty big character. Um, so if I go into my code and I set my character to the yellow army man, he's pretty big. Um, so I want to change that so he's much smaller. So again, I'm going to go into resize. I'm going to resize the canvas content, and I only want him to be 40 pixels tall. I'm going to resize him. Again, he still looks like an army man. He's very pixelated. And then I could <clears throat> paint bucket and then right click and basically get rid of all this junk around him. Um, and then I could crop him. So now he's much, much smaller in terms of size. And now when I run the code, you can see there's my little army man that I've created. So kind of cool. You can make your own characters. You can draw your own art. Um, and then make them animations within here. So you can call this like army man. And then whenever you're in your code, just make sure you pick the appropriate drop down for that. That's how you make sprites. Uh, the next ones are just kind of modifying and making sure you have the correct order of your sprites. So if you are making a kite, the last thing you want to do is draw the sprite. If you were to draw the sprite before the string, let's say I move this line of code up here, now you see the string is actually on top of this, the sprite. And if you drew it before the background, you wouldn't see it at all. 
because the back it draws the sprite then drew the background over top of it so pay attention to your order um, when you're creating your code comments are great so you can kind of plan what you're going to do before you actually do it um, this one you can change the scale so if I can change this back to one it'll go back to full size and again I just made a kite in the animation tool I just drew my own and there's that uh, this talks about the order of the code I've already done that getting a little try that on your own that was loud um, this is where you can you know put some text use text size to create text and put it anywhere on your your screen it's pretty straightforward again you can pause these at any time and use it to help you with your own code this activity you want your <clears throat> I'm actually going to go back in time so I'm going to use uh, start over and when you run it this is what you get and this is what you actually want to have so really the order is important so if you think about painting this picture I'm gonna paint the pink background first and then I'm gonna do the the snake he's next so that's the snake prisoner is my sprite so he really needs to be after the background so when I do that see how it shoves him back into the inside the bars and then the greetings is on top of the bars so that should be the last thing that happens so this whole section of black and text and greetings should be at the very end after these dark gray rectangles. And now you can see that my order matches this order. This is a sprite scene that I want you to, to sketch out. Um, all I required on this is that you have a background, you have some text, and a couple objects, and a sprite. You don't have to move the sprite yet this is coming up um, but you should have some sprite that you create you should have some background that you've created I made grass and I made a Sun and I drew my sprites now these other lines of code these are coming up in modifying sprites so you don't have to do that and then I put the text on top of the grass so if you notice, the grass is made up here after the background, and then the bunny and the text are drawn on top of it. Um, if you didn't, so if I put this text all the way up here after the background, you're not going to see it. So that score is now gone because the grass gets printed over top. So again, that order is critical when you're, when you're creating your, your scenes. Essentially, it's going through the next two more activities or just getting your scenes set up. So I'm going to finish those, and that's lesson six.